Welcome to Hard Talk from Belgrade, Serbia. I'm Stephen Sacker. Serbia is the biggest power in the Western Balkans, but right now it is at a strategic crossroads. Does it prioritize its relationships with the West, in particular its ambition for EU membership, or does it turn eastward, deepening its relations with Russia and China? Well, my guest in an exclusive interview is the president of Serbia, Aleksandar Vucic. His country is a regional power, but is it exercising that power responsibly? President Aleksandar Vucic, welcome to Hard Talk. Thank you for having me. It's a great pleasure to be here in Belgrade with you. Let me ask a question at the beginning which links the past and the present. When you were a young man, you were a member of the Serbian Radical Party. You were ideologically committed to the vision of a greater Serbia, a vision which led to dark times in the Balkans, to war, to terrible loss of life, to war crimes. Today, you're the president of Serbia. You are in a different political party. How much have you changed? I'm not ashamed to say that I changed myself, but I disagree with you with who was guilty and who was responsible for many bad things that were happening in the Balkans. We have different views on that and uh, not only speaking about our internal issues, when I say our internal issues, I mean issues from the former Yugoslavia, I mean about the uh, role of uh, Western powers and all the others that had a huge impact and influence on the situation at that time. But of course, only we have an idiom in Serbian, but only donkeys don't change themselves. And now I'm 30 years older and uh, of course, I am a matured person now leading the country and uh, need to care about our people's interests. And I believe uh, that, least, that at least we did something. So, so if you talk country. of change and you talk of maturity, let, let's just address one specific about the past and the present. Let's take the... I'll tell you, well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you one thing. Uh, Apart from disagreeing you mm. with, with all of your assessments and all of your marks of what was happening here, uh, I would say that uh, changing myself and uh, seeing and noticing that economy is something of an utmost importance, of an utmost importance for the country's future. And apart from that, you cannot do anything without having stability, peace and tranquility. So, so if I may, just one, in a sense, one specific question about the past and how you now see it. And it's about Srebrenica and the massacre, which UN courts ruled as a genocide, which was committed by Serbs in 1995 and thousands of Bosnian Muslims were killed. Recently, the UN uh, identified a day for commemoration of what it calls the Srebrenica genocide. Are you, as president of Serbia, now prepared to recognize that was a um, genocide? I, I have always been very much prepared to recognize and to acknowledge that it was a terrible massacre that happened in Srebrenica. And I went there, it was 20th anniversary, if I'm not mistaken. I went there and uh, I was able to bow my head and to lay a wreath and uh, was actually attacked by the crowd. And uh, no one is denying what was happening in Srebrenica, but speaking about that resolution after 29 years. And, and that word genocide, if, are you prepared was, to use if that it was, If it was, uh, that was launched by Germans and Bosniaks and we believe that it was a political initiative and as you could see 109 countries actually 
shared our views and uh, people did not realize why some other uh, massacres or some other big crimes were not acknowledged or recognized as genocide. And if it's about condolences, if it's uh, about paying tribute to the victims, always ready to do so. And I believe in reconciliation in the region, but I don't believe in uh, that kind of narrative that will always bring new political uh, clashes and new political troubles. It's interesting you say that, Mr. Time. President, because I've deliberately started in the past because I think it is relevant to the present, to how people perceive Serbia today. I am very interested that last summer there was a huge so-called Serbian unity rally which you attended and which brought together Serbs, not just from this country, political leaders from this country, but from Serbs living in communities in neighboring Balkan nations. Now, you used rhetoric. And you, and, uh, your, you, your people, you always, you always rally and gather people from Commonwealth countries, you know, so what? No, so let's, well, let's, discuss, let's discuss what was said it's at the rally. It, yeah. There was a declaration from this rally which noted that, quote, the Serbian people are a unique entity. One nation, one parliament was the slogan. It rang alarm bells, this language, in Bosnia, in Croatia, no, 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 no. in other countries too. It seemed to many people like the greater Serbia ideology is still here. No, it's not. And uh, it's uh, very much fabricated story by all those people that wanted to harm Serbia and Serb national interests. And I'll tell you how easy that is, because you were quoting or taking out of context something. We have no aspirations for one parliament. It was an assembly of Serb people. It is not the real parliament, the real parliament we have in Serbia, the real parliament they have in Srpska or wherever else. These are different stories. But what we said in the declaration is that we fully support observation of Dayton Peace Accord that was signed in 1995. And I was saying th thousands of times, and I'm reiterating that now, that we do support territorial integrity of Bosnia and Herzegovina in adherence with international public law and Dayton Peace Accord and territorial integrity of Republika Srpska within Bosnia and Herzegovina. What is unclear in that statement? And that was said that day tens of times. But nobody wanted to convey that message. What we wanted to say is that no one has right to diminish or to deprive Serbian people of their right to use their language, to use their Cyrillic letters, or whatever else. So if we, if we, if we start to discuss the specific points of great volatility in the Balkans today, you've mentioned Republika Srpska already, which is the Serb element within the have, complex federation of yeah, Bosnia-Herzegovina. You, you have just mentioned The Bosnian that. Serb leader, Milorad Dodik, he said this last May, he said, Bosnia and Herzegovina has reached its end. All that remains for us as Bosnian Serbs is to make an effort to part, to part in peace. He wants secession. Do you support him or do you say to him, Mr. Dodik, you cannot, you will not secede and join Serbia? I have a relatively good relationship with President Dodik and I respect him. I don't give any orders to him. I'm not in charge of bringing any decisions on behalf of Republika Srpska. I'm a president of Serbia. But you see how Hippocratic this is. When somebody wanted to secede from former Yugoslavia, and you were very much helpful to those people and to those former republics. But if someone wants to secede from them, that's, that becomes a biggest crime. But let me tell you, don't worry with Serbia. 
I believe that Milorad Dodik was provoked by different type of actions made by either high representative, either Bosniaks in Sarajevo or whatever. But these are the issues for him. Speaking about Serbia, Serbia is very much supportive to territorial integrity of Bosnia, including integrity of Srpska within Bosnia. I can repeat it thousands of times, and you cannot find a single statement made by myself on this issue that was different to what I said. I suppose what you could say to build upon that clarity is to say whatever Mr. Dodik and the Bosnian Serb think they want to do, I will be clear, they will never be allowed to enter a union with Serbia. They were not even asking for that. They were not even saying that. They were speaking about their rights from time to time and not always to go out of Bosnia, not speaking about unification with Serbia. Serbia has its own border, borders according to the constitution and in adherence with international public law, UN Charter and UN resolutions. And we don't need anything more, anything that will come from someone else and will give nothing to anyone that belongs to us. In that context then, let us talk about perhaps the most obvious source of tension and hostility in this region today, and that is your relationship with Kosovo. Now, you do not recognize the independence, the sovereignty of Kosovo, and yet for the last decade and more, you have been involved in an EU-supervised process of quote-unquote normalization with Kosovo. Surely if you are supposedly normalizing with Kosovo, you are de facto recognizing Kosovo. It has never been said, it has never been written anywhere something like that. But it's the truth, said. isn't it? I don't see that like that. I see differently. Normalization means that we live in peace, stability, tranquility, that we have a free flow of goods, capital, people, services, that we do develop our economies, that uh, we start speaking about different issues, and uh, try to resolve it. How can you live can in I, peace and if stability? I, if I, I'll, I'll tell you. This is more question to those people that actually opened Pandora's box. When you come to this country, when you say to our people here in Serbia, okay, do you support territorial integrity of Ukraine? They're going to say, yes, we do. And then when you come from London or from Washington, Berlin, Brussels, saying, well, we have to protect you and charter territorial integrity of Ukraine. You know what people here say? They go to hell because, yes, that's what we do. But what about territorial integrity of Serbia? You speak about UN Charter. Why did you violate UN Charter? I'm asking you now. Why your country bombarded Serbia in 1999 without UN Security Council decision, illegally? Why well, as you said, you, you've you, you said you've matured and changed since yeah, yeah, 1999. I changed, I changed and many you, of my views, but I, did, so. but I didn't change my view on illegal action that you did against this country. Sure, but I, if I may say so, now as the president for seven years of your country, you have been seeking a pathway to EU membership. The vast majority of EU countries recognize Kosovo. It is clear there will be no membership for Serbia in the European Union until you, you is, recognize Kosovo. My question to you is whether I was right saying this to you or you have some other arguments better than you have majority of EU countries that have already recognized Kosovo's independence. I'm asking you, was or did you violate or so-called Western community, did they violate international public law when they started bombing Serbia or not? I'm sure that's did a question they, you they, still put to they, leaders in they, the United States, I in do, Europe. Did they, violate, did they violate international public law and UN Charter recognizing Kosovo's independence, although it was still in effect? And even today, we have in effect Resolution 1244, which speaks about territorial integrity of Serbia. My question is this. It's a simple one about the future. 
do you believe there is a real danger of a new war that is based on your hostility, Kosovo's hostility to you, i.e. a resumption of that we conflict? Are, if you ask me, if you ask me if this is just not a sort of political game or a political argument, mm -hmm. I believe in peace. We are not provoking anyone and we won't do it. And I'm very happy with our economic development. Serbia is one out of two or three countries with the biggest growth rate in an entire Europe. I believe that you couldn't recognize Belgrade when you were coming this time, if you were here before. It's a long time since I've been yeah, here. Yeah, but I believe it's, and a it's totally, changed. It's, it's, a, it's changed. It's yeah. a totally different city. And what I've taken care of, it's the fact that Serbia is today 50% of overall Western Balkans GDP. Serbia is 55% of overall Western Balkans export. Serbia is 64% of overall Western Balkans FDI attraction. These are my dreams. My dream is Expo 2027. My dream is to fulfill all criteria by the end of 2026. This is what I'm focused on. You brought me back to the past because you need to have some hard discussions as your show is entitled, and I have nothing against it. I'm ready to, but my real focus is on economic reforms, yep. is on the future, and uh, just want to have a regular, normal relationship with everybody in the region, and that's it. So you are focused on your economy. Interesting yes. that with your economic plan, there is a close relationship still with Russia. Your energy ties with Russia have actually been deepened since Putin's full-scale invasion of Ukraine no, in February 2022. No, it's not true. These are false data. I have an exact data. It's uh, unfortunately our trade exchange is, is twice smaller than it used to be. I'm talking about energy reliance you're, still on Russia. No, we are spe you're speaking about energy reliance, and we are trying and doing our best to diversify it. And that's why we that's why we built that I, uh, IBG uh, that interconnector between Serbia and Bulgaria. Right. That's why we started not only negotiating. That's why we. Uh, started buying uh, gas from Azerbaijan as well. That's that's what I discussed recently with Il Ilkan Aliyev as it, well. It just, but we still get a lot of gas quantities from Russia. You do because, indeed, and you've refused to impose economic sanctions on Russia, even though the EU, which you want to be part of, has imposed crippling sanctions yeah, and, on and, Russia. Yeah, and they're, they're, yes, they imposed all the sanctions and they're buying 20 times more gas and uh, 1,000 times more oil than Serbia is buying from Russia. Here's a memorable statement that a U.S. official said about you and about Serbia some time ago. He said to you, he said, you cannot sit on two chairs at the same time, especially if they are far apart. Isn't that an actual and description of what him, you are trying to do? No, not exactly. I sit only on Serbian chair and very much proud of that. I have, as you can see, only one chair, no two chairs. And our chair is that it means that we make our decisions by ourselves. It means that we supported Ukraine speaking about humanitarian aid, financial aid, more than all the other in the Western Balkans altogether. This so is, you, you this think is, there's no contradiction in your position? There is no contradiction at all. There is a lot of contradictions in, in the behavior of all the others, but we are very much principled and morally principled. Many of your former political allies a former deputy prime minister who was in your party, who quit your party last year. She, who is she, that? Zorana Mikhailovic. Mm -hmm. She says that you are she acting like ago. an authoritarian and that you will take Serbia away from she was saying that, a European pathway. She was, she was saying that a year ago. Now she says a bit differently. Not because we got closer to each other, but because she sees the truth. She was a bit angry. That's her right. Here's, gonna, here's, here, here's what the former mayor of Belgrade said recently. He said today's Serbia wouldn't even be allowed to become a candidate for EU membership. Who is the former mayor? Please tell Mr. me. Mr. Dragan Gilas. It's our political opponent. He's entitled to an opinion just because he opposes you. You think he can't have an opinion? No, he, he has all the right to say whatever he wants, but it's okay. But it's you're uh, saying that my opponents, they think differently. Of course, they think differently. At the end, we did it. But we the, EU, a, the EU sees... We opened the negotia negotiating process with the European Union, not them. But I guess what the EU sees in your relationship with Putin, in your developing relationship with China, it's in not foreign me, policy it's not, me, it's not me that I spoke to Putin 
tens of times in the last two and a half years. I spoke once when he congratulated me by phone, when he congratulated me, 80th anniversary but, of but, liberation. But the EU sees your foreign moment, policy. The EU sees wait your... Moment. Hang on. The but, EU sees... but EU leaders were going to Moscow seeing President Putin and uh, discussing all the issues and still buying oil and gas from Putin and uh, trying to depict as the only culprit Serbia. We are, I, the, we are an easy target. I'm making no a simple point, that. Mr. President. I'm saying the EU looks at your foreign policy. The EU looks at your domestic policy. For example, they say that they, are, they see sign, dangerous signs of you not respecting fundamental values like the freedom of the press, the independence of the judiciary, independent rule of law. They say that in all of those different areas, you are moving away from the no, European no, pathway. No, you saw the report. They say that we made a limited progress. Limited. And they also cited, but for example, the Independent Journalist limited, Association limited, of Serbia, which says that progress, 181 limited attacks limited on journalists were conducted in this country in 2023. A limited progress is not and does not mean going backwards, which means that you are not saying the truth. But apart from that, I fully agree with you that there are thousands of things that we need to improve, thousands of things that we need to work on. That's why we are now changing re regulatory agency. That's, now, that's why we are now working very hard and very closely with ODIR in improving all the regulation regarding election processes and everything else. And I agree with them. That's why I said that together with Expo, together with the development of the country. And in that EU report, you could have seen that they were saying that Serbia's economy is doing perfectly well, but you were not interested to say that. And these are, these are the issues that we need to improve, and I agree with them. A final, okay. a final point, because we're out of time. You said, I sit in Serbia's chair. Yeah. This allegation that I'm trying to sit in two different chairs at the same time is fundamentally wrong. I just wonder when people say, is Serbia fundamentally committed to embracing the European Union or whether it's more interested in developing ties with Russia, with China, Trump ends the discussion about a binary choice between East and West. I think that, uh, first of all, yes, once again, I'm very much proud to sit on Serbian chair. And which means our strategic goal is to become a full-fledged EU member state and we'll do all necessary reforms, and we'll speed up all the processes, and we'll do our best to finish it by the end of 2026. It doesn't mean that we're gonna be a part of EU in 2027 or 2028, it's up to EU countries. But uh, whether we are going to uh, say everything the worst about our traditional uh, friends or uh, partners from the East, no, we are not gonna do it. We are not gonna do it. It's uh, whether we have a good relationship with China today, yes, we do. President Trump was asking me when I was entering the Oval Office, he was like saying, hey, Vucic, you guy, I don't know, handsome guy, tall guy, whatever, he was saying, you have also problems with uh, Chinese. I said, no, Mr. President, I have no problems with Chinese. And uh, that's because I'm always saying the truth when I speak to different type of statesmen. And I always have the same story which I present to everybody. And that's what people, they can like me, they can dislike me or hate me or despise me, but uh, at the end, they show respect for that attitude. Mr. President, we have to end there. Thank you very much for joining me on Hard Talk. Thank you very much. Thank you.